Adam here for PC Monitors and today I'm going to be taking a look at the OSD on-screen display menu system of this monitor here which is a Philips 272G5DYEB model number which just rolls off the tongue I'm sure you'll agree now the menu system is controlled by these buttons to the bottom right of the bottom bezel here and they're touch sensitive which I know not everyone likes but Personally, I find these ones all right. They're fairly responsive, quite easy to use, I find. And you can see that they've got labels on them. Um, the first one has a little crosshair and a left arrow. The second one, if it, my camera would focus, has a little grid pattern of some sort and a down arrow. Then there's ULMB and an up arrow. And the menu system slash OK. And then here there's the power button and the accompanying small white power LED. So the first button here, if you just press that when you're not in the main menu system, gives you this nice little on-screen crosshair. And if you press it again, that disappears. If you press the second button on its own, you can select one of six crosshair designs for the on-screen crosshair and any of you who have seen our review of the AOC G2460PG will find that these crosshairs are extremely familiar and just as uninspiring and that's because AOC and Philips monitors are basically designed in the same buildings and they're produced in the same factories they are very similar inside. Next there's ULMB ultra low motion blur and if I press that, it says ULMB only possible at 85, 100 or 120 hertz. I'm running the monitor at 144 hertz at the moment, so you can't use ULMB at that refresh rate. If I quickly switch that over to 120 hertz, I should be able to activate the ULMB setting. So I'll press that button again, and there we go. It says ULMB on, and you can see some, you should be able to see a strange strobing pattern on the um, video. That's because the backlight is flicking on and off 120 times a second and you can't actually see that strobing. You can see a mild flickering if you uh, are sensitive to that sort of thing but you can't see this distinct strobing pattern. You, you will notice that the screen is a bit dimmer. You can probably see that on the video. You can definitely see that in real life as well. And that feature is discussed at uh, in great detail in the review, so definitely check that out. And the fourth button along opens the main menu. And I'm just going to turn ULMB off so we can get a clear view of the menu. It's laid out in Philips usual style. It's a little bit cut back compared to some of Philips other monitors because it has the G-Sync module which restricts the manufacturer's uh, features somewhat. So there's no dynamic contrast function, there's no picture in picture, picture by picture, and there's no um, smart image game presets or anything like that. So the picture section um, of the menu allows you to adjust the brightness, the contrast, the smart response setting, which is um, the pixel overdrive feature of the monitor, the greater gray acceleration, and there are four different settings there. You can have it off, fast, faster or fastest. Um, and there's a gamma setting. Again, the, the, both of these settings uh, and several of the other settings are discussed in the review, um, but I'm not going to bore you to death by talking about them at length in this video. So you can set the gamma setting there between 1.8 and 2.6, although as we see in the review the actual measured values are a little deviate a little bit from the uh, the proposed values there. So it definitely does change the gamma and it, it's nice to have a hardware based setting for that sort of thing. And there's the colour menu next which allows you to change the colour temperature. You can select the default 6500K um, or you can adjust it to a number of other settings. I, I find the 5000K quite useful. You can probably see if I just flip between them, you can see that the image becomes warmer. 
with a 5000K option. It's sort of like a, a blue light, a low blue light setting or a reading mode. It's uh, good for relaxing evening viewing, and I quite like having that sort of setting on a monitor. You can select sRGB, which um, is pretty much it, well. It's, it's exactly the same as 6500K, except it has independent brightness uh, settings. So if you wanted to uh, set this to full brightness but you want to do 6500k profile to have lower brightness that's something you can do and again there's another profile here user define which again has independent brightness control but is otherwise similar to 6500k and that allows you to also adjust the red green and blue color channels individually and you see these are all on 100 um, and I was using 6500K before. As mentioned in the review, this particular unit of this uh, model has pretty much dot on 6500K colour temperature in the centre of the screen, so there was no need to actually adjust the colour channels, which was nice to see. And next is the language menu, which does what it says on the tin, really, allows you to select the language of the OSD. And there's some more options there if I scroll down further. Well, there's one more option. Not sure exactly what that says, but okay. And next is OSD settings, which just allows you to adjust some simple aspects about how the OSD is displayed on the screen. For example, the horizontal and vertical position, the transparency level, or no, yes, transparency level. So you can select. A um, little bit of transparency, which is one there. You can select more transparency, an extreme amount of transparency, or virtually invisible, depending on your preferences. By default, that's set to off, so it's not transparent at all. There's the OST timeout, which allows you to select a time after which the OST will disappear on its own after the last button press. So there's 5 seconds, 10, 20, 30, and 60 that you can select there. Of course, if you want to exit the OSD yourself, you can just press that little left arrow there, which is the back button. Setup next. Again, that has allows you to activate or deactivate the ultra-low motion blur feature. And if you have it enabled, it also allows you to adjust the pulse width and you can see that's another thing that we discuss in the review but basically the lowest pulse width setting 10 gives you the dimmest image but potentially the best motion clarity whereas you can see if I increase the pulse width the screen gets brighter and brighter but the potential motion clarity goes down a little bit but of course as is discussed in the review, even at a pulse width of 100 with ULMB enabled, the, the motion clarity where the, where the frame rate meets the refresh rate is, is really good. So lots of users, I, I think, would be quite happy to use the maximum brightness setting there. And it is a little bit dimmer than um, without ULMB on. It's, um, well, a little bit dimmer than my test settings. If Some people might like much higher brightness. It definitely dims the screen anyway. So there's also a reset function, which just allows you to do a factory reset if you've fiddled about with the settings and you've messed something up. And there's information, which is particularly useful on this monitor, actually, because if you recall, or if you've seen our other G-Sync videos of the OSD systems, you'll notice that they have a little information label on that tells you what resolution, what refresh rate the monitor's um, using, but also the, the mode that it's in. For example, ULMB, Normal, G-Sync, or 3D. But this, this monitor doesn't actually have that. And unlike the ROG Swift, the, um, the power button, it doesn't change colour or anything like that to, to indicate what mode the monitor's in. So actually the, the only way the monitor will tell you what it's doing is on this little information section here. So there it says ULMB, and it says the resolution and the refresh rate. And initially, when I was reviewing this monitor, I 
I theorize that the power button here um, starts flashing when you're in G-Sync or you're in ULMB um, to, to indicate that you're not just in the normal mode, you're actually using one of these special NVIDIA specific features. But I actually have ULMB on at the moment and the, tra the power light's completely static. And I've also noticed that it seems to blink for no apparent reason even when it's uh, in normal mode after you've activated certain uh, settings in the menu or, or done certain things. And I'm not sure at this stage what exactly triggers it, so um, it's a bit of a curious one, that. One last feature I'd like to show you is what happens when you enable 3D on the monitor, which can be done if you've got this NVIDIA 3D Vision kit. Um, I've got the NVIDIA 3D Vision 2 emitter or transceiver or whatever you want to call it here. So th there isn't anything like that built into the monitor. You have to buy the kit separately, but the monitor is capable of 3D vision. So if I go into the NVIDIA control panel and enable stereoscopic 3D, test stereoscopic 3D, and then enter the menu, you can see that the picture options have now changed a bit. So instead of brightness, there's something called NVIDIA Light Boost, which is basically your brightness setting when you're in 3D. And that's at max by default. Contrast is set to 45 by default, but as I mentioned in the review, I found that I could increase it just a little bit to 50 without any noticeable negative impact on the image. And that gives you a little bit of extra brightness. And I think that's the yeah, you can't adjust the smart response when you're in um, 3D mode either, but actually uh, there was no issue with uh, trailing or any specific crosstalk issue from the monitor itself, so there's no reason to want to adjust that anyway. And I think that's... yeah, that's everything. So, that was the OSD menu system of the Philips 272G5DYEB. So make sure you check out the review on PCMonitors.info for a lot more information about the, uh, the monitor and all of its NVIDIA fun, like the uh, G-Sync feature and the ULMB and, of course, 3D.